Yes, it's always I just stay prepared on the sideline, even the previous games before, and just I try to find my rhythm there. But of course, being out there is way different. And as the game went on, I definitely felt more comfortable and comfortable. Joe, when you look at the matchups against the Bills, what sticks out to you? Uh, they have a great quarterback receiver duo. They uh, they're real explosive. They they're just really good on that offensive side in general. Is that include with what you all seen with Emmanuel Sanders and with Cole Beasley, like how they can get in the slots and get get the Josh Allen gets the ball out pretty fast. Right, he has a great arm. He can make pretty much any throw on the field. So it's we basically got to be real sticky this week and just looking forward up to the matchups we got with Cole Beasley and the Stephon Diggs and all them. And what about when they go from? They also have a, a pretty good running game. Right, and we're going to have to stop Josh Allen, too, because, of course, he can run. He's, what, 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, so we just got to tame all that, play our game, and just really just focus on on ourselves, and we should be good. This is a situation where you're all helping each other out with these receivers, or are you kind of locked in on the game? We, we gonna, we're going to just stick to what we've been doing these rest of the weeks and just getting better at what we've been doing. We just know we beat ourselves with a couple few mistakes here in, in critical times in the game, so we're just going to focus on each other and be what we're supposed to be and trust our teammates. What are some of those things you learned from the Panthers? Just being in the right spot at the right time, just depth things. And just, it's just little things like that that we can just fix on. How hard is that to do, though, knowing that you know you want to stay disciplined, you want to stay you know, where you're supposed to be, but then you see Josh break out, and you come off of that, then next thing you know, he can beat you with a throw. And that's part of trusting our teammates. So we got to trust. I got. I have to trust, and my other teammate have to trust that the other teammate will be there in the right spot and just keep on going that with, with, without, throughout the whole game. You seem to have a good grip of that yourself. I think against Cleveland, you were, had a play where you probably covered about 30 yards and one to cover both the pass and right. against Baker. I mean, what goes into being aware of those situations? Just knowing what defensive calls we in and just what's our responsibilities for that play is just that all factors into it, of course, and just being being where we're supposed to be. We'll have it. We'll being able to have the, this long amount of time to prepare with that. Do that help you all? Yeah. To play the Thursday night game. Right, that'll help. And we got a little downtime too, so got a little time away. And I feel like we can just, that, that brought us back to focus back up and, you know, just get away from football. Coach Cully was talking about get away from football for a little bit these these last one and two days. So I think that was big and we was just amped to come back. How did you spend your downtime? Just relaxing, sleeping, really sleeping. Oh, yeah, getting the body rested. A lot. I woke up at 10 o'clock today, actually. <laughs> it, was, it was lovely. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Yep. Um, yeah, you know, we played two games in 10 days, so to have that weekend to kind of regroup and um, – like you said, kind of rejuvenate ourselves and, and mentally and physically. And, uh, you know, those with families, it's a good time to spend time with them and just kind of deload all around. In what ways are you helping Davis Mills as the offense is opening up more to where he has some checks on the plays? Um, he's doing a tremendous job. Um, you know, we had a couple of hiccups in Cleveland this last game. He called pretty clean. Um, so there's not much I need to do. Um, like I said, after the Cleveland game, I have a lot of trust in him, um, a lot of faith um, in his coaching and his ability. He's here for a reason. And I don't want to make stuff up and get out of my way and, 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 and press and do things that I normally don't do. So um, I'm going to keep my job simple, do what I do, and let him ball. What about that Buffalo Bills by seven? Um, yeah, I'll need to start watching film of them tonight. Um, but I did catch their game on TV. Um, they got a pretty good offense um, that, that will score a lot of points, um, and, and their defense is uh, pretty good, and they got a lot of rotation up front. So um, we'll just have to have a good week of practice and preparation, um, tune in to the game plan and the ins and outs of it, the details, and, and just, um, just prepare mentally and physically just like any other game. Um, we just, we just need to stay ahead of the sticks, um, not let the game start to get away from us where we are in the position where we have to throw to stay in the game. Um, I, I don't think there's 
uh, a need to panic or a, a drastic change that needs to happen. We just need to stay at it, um, you know, be uh, have a purpose at practice uh, for what we're doing and have a game plan individually, group, offensively, uh, to go out there and, and pick one thing to get better at and just work at that. Um, I, I don't think necessarily. Um, I, don't, I don't think the what quarterback you have back there impacts the run game. Um, I just think you know we we haven't had a chance to um, you know other than the Jacksonville game have a game where we are in uh, what's the word like where we have the momentum and and the feeling of we're going to run the ball over and over and over. Um, you know Cleveland was kind of a uh, a brawl back and forth in this last game it obviously went in a negative way for us. So, um, you know, it's week four. We know what we need to do. Um, we'll have a game plan. We'll keep things simple, go out there and, and just play football. Is it a schematic thing, a physical thing in a run game? Um, I, don't, I don't think it's either of those. I just, you know, it's something that's going to come with time. There's a lot of new pieces. Um, you know, there's going to be some hiccups. Uh, you know, even even the really good run teams will have a day where it's not the best. So um, we're not panicked. Um, we're not concerned. We just know that we need to not be complacent, and we need to come every day with the purpose, and, and it starts on Wednesday. Justin, you've talked before about how uh, you obviously made a similar transition to what Titus has made from right tackle to left guard. When do you feel like you start, you personally, I was thinking you might be different, but when did you start to feel kind of more settled? Did, did, did you feel that way at the start of the season, or um, I'm sweating. Um, no, uh, I I didn't like guard. I mean, if we're if we're being frank, it wasn't my f most favorite position. I'd rather play tackle or center. Um, but I mean, I feel like I feel like he's had a lot of uh, a lot of time to adjust. He's gonna have things, you know. You'll see things in games that you won't see in practice. Um, you know, you you you're going against. Uh, um, I, I don't know. You're going against what? Ed Oliver. Uh, you're going against Star. We we don't practice against those guys. So it's every week you're going to have a new look, a new opponent, a new way to how they play things. So um, with him, it's just repetition. You know, he'll see something one time in the game and it won't happen again, um, and vice versa. So um, just reps, just time. Um, Tice is a pro. He's a good pro. Um, there's a reason why he got drafted high and why he's here and why they trust him to play on the left side. Yeah, I like Derek Brown, one of those guys that gives you some, you know, reminders of what you can do and like to learn from. You were talking about like you're not seeing guys in practice. Oh sure. The Carolina guy? Um yeah. You know, he was he was uh he was a load. He he's a good player. Um he's going to be for numerous years. So that's another example. Um, um we don't have a guy that size or that stature on this team. Um that, that can create issues in that way. So it'll be good for him, good for us overall to, um, you know, obviously not to have a game like we had against Carolina, but to see a defense like that and to just see different personnel and get the reps against those is going to benefit us down the road. Justin, after watching the film review of that Carolina game, what, what are some of the things that you saw that the offensive line could clean up to keep the pocket a little bit clean for Davis Mills going into Buffalo? Um, Just, just, I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, just kind of working your technique, and, and because assignment wise, we were on point, and Davis did a great job directing the show, um, and so it's just small details that, you know, if one guy does it and another guy does it, and you have two mistakes on a play, um, things will add up, and the, the the play won't work the way we have planned. So it's just uh, being focused, um, you know working on your technique and, and making a habit and like I said coming every day with a purpose and, and with a goal in mind uh, daily a long-term goal a short-term goal and just staying with it um, you know the season is not a sprint so it's it's, it's a grind you all had some success in that two minute uh, offense at, at the end of the, of the first half is that something at the line that you would like to see more of a change of pace and more of tempo um, well the situation kind of you know brought that upon us so um, 
you know, I don't, I, w- I don't know if being an offense lineman, we'd want to go out there and do no huddle the whole game. Um, but in in that situation, two minute in the half in the game, we understand and you know we accept that you know that's what we have to do. But it's great to keep them on their toes. Um, I've done in my past career where we've just kind of switched up the tempo in in the first quarter or the third quarter, um, just because just to get them where they can't substitute and and do this and that. So um, you could play mind games with that, but we got to make sure we put ourselves in a position where we have the freedom to do that, um, you know, by, by playing clean football, putting up points, finishing drives, um, and, and building confidence within it. Yeah, I, I think Cooks is a real underrated player. Um, after seeing him, you know, during camp the past couple of weeks, uh, you know, he's a really good running back. He's really fast, or wide receiver. I'm sorry, but he's really fast and, and explosive and um, competitive, aggressive. Uh, but you can look kind of across the board. I think Farrow is a presence that without him, we'd miss him for sure. Um, I think uh, bringing Danny in here was a big lift for us, and, and you know we can't wait to get him back. Nico, you know he's going to be a really good player. Um, you can go on and on. Uh, Chris Conley. Um, I, I just think this team offensively, defensively, but you know, being an offensive player, I think offensively, um, we have a lot of guys who have seen a lot of ball, played a lot of ball, and um, know what they're best at. And you know, we just got to find a way to play four quarters what we want, and, and just sustain it and keep it going. Does it feel like you're? Um, and what what goes into the? Um, you know, uh, just. What goes into how to um, approach like defenses? Because it seems like they'll, I'm, I'm sure it's not just the Panthers, but others that kind of crowd their line, and then all of a sudden, like tackles are dropping back, and then others are coming from other directions. I mean, how what what goes into like approaching that and you know um, protection? Uh, film study. Um, you know, they didn't they didn't do anything that we were unprepared for. So, um, and obviously, as the season goes on, you get more and more info. Um, I think the first couple games is, you know, the hardest games to prepare for because you don't have a lot of film. Um, you know, especially if if they have new players that weren't on the team last year, you don't know how they're going to fit in or or, or gel. So, um, yeah, I just think film study, repetition, and, and and trusting your rules within the play. Appreciate it. Michigan at my mom's house. She has it. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah, she has it like on a little stand with some pictures of family around it. And yeah, it's just sitting in the living room. <laughs> now, I won it and I was still in college, so I mean, you don't just like keep it in the dorm, I guess. No, so uh, I just let her take it home, and um, it's just been there ever since. And uh, I told her I'm going to take it at some point when I, you know, have a nice, appropriate display for it. But that time has not come yet, so she's still holding it down. And, uh, yep, it's in the living room. She says people come order, like, give the pizza, and they be like, is that a Heisman? (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so it's just in the house, and my, and my mom's holding it down. You don't really think you're going to get it back. Huh? So you don't really think you're going to get it back. I'm going to get it back for sure. I'm definitely getting it back. Did it hit you right away? Does the significance of it or take a while? Um, it's just like when people bring it up, you know, it's just crazy to remember, you know, the memories of it and just being able to attain it and obstacles and over that I've overcome to be able to make that and then just the team I was on to be able to help me win that. Um, you know, I still so I, st- I still want to do so much more. Like, you know what I mean? When I won it, st- I wanted to win the national championship. Like, I still wanted to, you know, have a big year and get drafted. And um, so I still always wanted to accomplish more. So I, I think, like, maybe when I'm done, maybe it'll 
settle in. But you know, it's, it is crazy, you know, to be the first one in Alabama and being able to win that trophy was a huge honor and something that I'm proud of. I mean, uh, I don't have no no championship trophy, so nothing quite, you know, like that. But just having a 11 year career so far, that's something I'm proud of. I'm proud of that Heisman. I'm proud of, you know, some of the seasons that I've had. I've been able to make some Pro Bowls. Um, been able to win some, you know, division championships. Been able to been able to experience some playoff wins. All that stuff is just great memories, it's, uh, you know, a testament to hard work, dedication, and being on good teams. So if there's any similarities, I would say being put, putting together the hard work, being on, uh, being on good teams, all the hard work, you know, that's what I'm proud of with winning the Heisman. That's what I'm proud of with being 11 years in and having to win some great games and some playoff games and, you know, had some individual success as far as Pro Bowls and stuff like that. I'm proud of those moments, just like I'm proud of one in the Heisman, but still have so much more I want to accomplish, so I don't kind of live on those things, kind of just want to achieve more. Well, they wanted me. Um, they had interest in me, and I know some of the players that have been on these teams. I know that they were two years removed from, you know, being in the AFC Championship, you know, up on the Chiefs. So, you know, there was potential. Just have to, you know, there's been some struggles and some tough times, but I know there's good people in the organization, good people on the team. I know Cooks, you know. Um, so just being able to come here, be able to have opportunity to play this game that I love, have, have the opportunity to be able to run the ball, be, be able to have the opportunity to, you know, put my best foot forward to help a team, you know, win games. So that's what I saw. And then they were interested in me. I was interested in being here, and it just worked like that. Yeah, I've played this unit a number of times, and uh, they're, they're just really well coached, and they play really well together. I mean, the Mike linebacker, he's one of the you know best young guys in football. Um, you know, the, the front the front four, they get after it. Um, you know, Milano, he's another great linebacker. Uh, the secondary, they play well. It's just that they play well as a unit. Uh, they're well coached. They execute. They're, they're comfortable in their scheme and what their roles is, what their roles are within the scheme. So... It'll be a challenge for us, something that uh, we'll be looking forward to, and we'll be preparing all week, giving ourselves the best chance, you know, to go out there, execute, and have success. How much more can Davis Mills do now that the offense is kind of being opened up a little more for him? I mean, I I'm, I'm have all the confidence in, in him. And uh, he's just so calm. He's smooth. He's uh, collected. Like, you know, it doesn't seem like it's too much for him. So I'm sure, um, you know, with a week, to be able to prepare, be able to watch the film, be able to take the practice reps, be able to have the, you know, the mental, emotional, physical uh, preparation it takes to go out there and have success on Sundays. I think he's going to do a great job. And uh, we open up the playbook, let him do his thing. Uh, I think he's going to do a great job. We all just have to do our jobs. We all have to make it easy on him as possible. And that just comes from, you know, us executing, everyone, every man doing their job to the best of their ability. And I think it's just important for us to make sure that we're staying on schedule, staying ahead of the change so he can, you know, operate and do his thing. What do you think the reason was the lack of, uh, was the lack of success in the running game on last week? Sometimes it'd be like that. Um, you know, they had a good front. Obviously, they had a good scheme. And... Uh, I think just a few plays here and there, we just weren't able to, you know, one one way or another, you know, we just got to find a way to have more success. So I think every individual is just kind of looking at themselves, looking at the film, correcting the film, and seeing what they have to do to change the results. So I don't think it's one reason, one rhyme or reason, but uh, I just think, you know, it was a difficult game for us, and we just have to find a way to do better. No, I, don't, I think I don't do anything extra. I just stay stay the course. And obviously we let him know that we have his back and that he doesn't have to do too much, that he doesn't have to do all this on his own, and that, you know, he can lean on us because we, we have his back. You know, it's not all on him. It's, it's on all of us. So we want to make his job easier. We all want to perform to the best of our ability, and we want to do our best so, you know, he can shine and he can do his job. So 
Um, you know, I don't do anything out of the ordinary or anything extra. Just support him, encourage him, let him know that we have his back. How much, how much improvisation is there in the the running game to whenever whenever you're cutting back or looking for vision? How much goes into how y'all prepare for games in that one? Uh, well, obviously, you you know study film, see teams are. Are, are they slow playing runs? Are they over playing runs? How's the front? You know, or, or are they a penetrating front? Are they a two gap in front? Those are all things you study. Do they bring extra safety down in for run support? Uh, do the corners trigger fast on run support? Those are all things that you kind of, you know, study and and watch when you're watching film on the defense. And but you always have to play the run true to what it is. So. If you have your read and he's getting reached, you keep pressing outside. If he's overrunning it, you know, you might have the, you know, the cut up. And if they're really overplaying it, you might have to cut back. So it's just you study the film, but at the end of the day, when the runs are called, you trust your eyes, you trust your read, you trust your fundamentals, and you run to the space. You run to where the people are, you know, where the color's not. Where the opposite color, you run away from it. So, um yeah, you study hard, and but when the game comes, you just trust your eyes, trust your technique, and hit it hard. Hit the whole hard, hit the whole fast, and hopefully it was the correct read more times than not. And if it's not, you know, we study the film the next day and try to correct it. How important would it be to sustain, uh, to, to sustain drives on offense to, in order to keep that high power offense up Buffalo off the field? Yeah, always want to have ball control. Always want to have control of the time of possession. Obviously, when you have a prolific offense that scores a lot of points. The number one asset to that is a run game and taking control, uh, taking the ball. You know, time of possession, controlling the ball, moving the sticks, keeping them on the sideline, keeping your defense rested, keeping them, giving them limited opportunities to be able to score. And then, you know, so that's why it's so important to be able to move the chains, stay on course, uh, have those drives and sustained drives where their offense is not on the field. Um, that they're on the sideline. Our defense is resting and recovering. And when they get out there, they can, you know, make the plays necessary to s slow them down, stop them, and, you know, get turnovers and give us extra possession so we can keep them on the sideline. You know what I mean? Obviously, when you have uh, a team and a quarterback of explosive players that put up a lot of points, you want to the, – the number one defense for that is the offense that's sustaining the ball, moving the chains, and keeping them on the sideline. So I think that will be a – Big point of emphasis for us. It's, it always is a big point of emphasis for us, being able to stay ahead of the chains, being able to control the ball, being able to make first downs and sustain long drives and score touchdowns in the red zone, not field goals. Those are all things that kind of help you, you know, when you have an explosive offense on the other side. Well, do you sense that uh, defenses are playing the running differently against you guys and Davidson back there, quarterback? Maybe Tyrod just is not the same sort of threat as a mobile quarterback as a rookie as well? I mean, you just got to adjust and adapt to whatever they're showing you. And if they're bringing pressure or bringing more people in the box, you know, we have to prove to them different, that we can move the ball through the air, that we can run the ball still effectively and efficiently. And uh, that's just on us as offense, on, on us as a team. You know, if they give us something, you have to be able to adapt, you have to be able to adjust, you have to be able to execute. So if they're bringing more people in the box, you know, we have to make sure that we're protecting it up front, keeping him clean so he can um, make the throws down the field. If they're – is a run call. We have to make sure we're being efficient. Everyone's on, on point with who they're blocking, who their assignments are, and we have to run hard and take care of the ball. So, um, you know, no matter what defenses are doing to us, we have to adapt, we have to adjust, we have to execute, we have to stay the course. Away from the field, last uh, one. Away from the field, did you get a chance to see your former teammates' uh, field goal yesterday? Yeah, Tuck, man, he's ridiculous. He's, he's ridiculous. I mean, he bailed him out, right? 66 yard field goal off the upright. To the back of the net, walk off. I mean, the dude's ridiculous. You know, they say he's the best in the league, and you know he proves it year in and year out. Um, all my experiences with him have been been crazy, you know. And just to see him go ahead and walk off on a 66 yarder is insane. Like it was, I think it's an NFL record. And who other than to do it than Justin Tucker? You know, he's the man. So I, I do I do remember him missing one field goal when I was in New Orleans. We went up there. Uh, we went up there to uh, to Baltimore. It was my last season in New Orleans, and they had went on a drive, and they had they were, they were just an extra point away from tying the game up. And uh, I think the announcer said something like he's made, made like well, however many in a row, and he shanked it, and it went wide right. We won. You know, it was a dog fight. But other than that, you know, what I mean, that's the only field goal I ever seen him miss. But um, 
hate to bring up a sour moment in such a great moment, but, you know, he's the GOAT. He's the best in the league doing it, um, and he proves it, and he just proved it again yesterday. So congrats to you, Tuck. You know what it is, man. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah.